Morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, to the show a man who is uh, familiar to many of you. Archbishop uh, Terence Prendergast is here the, uh, from the Archdiocese of Ottawa. Welcome, Archbishop. Good to have you on the program. Thank you, Kurt. Good to be with you. What are your uh, feelings on this day? This is an interesting day in the, in the Roman Catholic Church, isn't it? It is, very much. Uh, well, last night when we had the uh, Mass of Thanksgiving for the Pope at the Cathedral, I was asked the same thing by the Radio Canada interviewer, and I said, and it just came to me, the Pope is the one who sent me to Ottawa, uh, this Pope, and uh, I've met him a number of times since. And in fact, uh, I met him also last month, and I kept thinking during the audience, how long can this man keep this up? Mm. You know, it's, it's an inhuman demand on somebody who's 85 plus. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's going to mean a significant change for the church, perhaps even a revisioning of our expectations of what a pope can do. You know, John Paul was right. the magnetic person who traveled the whole world. Right. And, and Benedict, who was 20 years older when he was elected, was expected to do the same thing. He cut back, but, but you know, maybe we make inhuman demands on, on the popes. Maybe so, because Pope Benedict uh, is the first pope in some 600 years to actually step down. It's an unusual occurrence, obviously. but. You know, is it time that, uh, you know, uh, uh, future popes and, and the organization that is the Roman Catholic Church takes a look at this and says, you know, maybe that's a good option to have? A limited term, you mean? Mm. That's a possibility. Uh, I think one of the concerns that people have is the fact that a pope has resigned might put pressures on him from other people to resign. And I think he needs to that's do it freely. Point. This is one of the things that, uh, that the legislation says. No one accepts it, but the pope has to f say, I freely do this. Now, as people get older, you suffer from, uh, say, uh, Alzheimer's or something mm. like that, where a person's capacity start to diminish right. when you step in and who steps in, because right. there's no mechanism for that. Yeah, if you can't do the job that you, you know, you're, 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 called uh, to do. you're called to do, then, then should you continue is the question. What's been the reaction of uh, people, uh, Roman Catholics here that you know and that you've talked to about well, this? Well, some of them are quite upset by it. Really? They, yeah, they find that this is uh, changing their whole way of thinking about the Pope. Uh, others are quite uh, calm and peaceful and really think that this is an important step. I think the fact that he um, described it in terms of, of, of a spiritual decision made before God, uh, you know, I'm doing this for the good of the church, I no longer have the capacity to give the leadership that I need. Mm. Other people have said, well, maybe it would have been a time for him to, to simply cut back on his duties and do what he does well, which is to write and to speak right. and, and not stay, to travel. And stay but, as, but I think yeah. the demands of the papacy today uh, have a mixture of that visibility as well as uh, back behind the scenes. Yeah, it's an interesting decision he made. Uh, Archbishop, what happens now? Obviously the same procedure as per usual? Well, uh, in the past it was with the Pope had died, right. but they're going to take the fisherman's ring I guess today before, after he leaves and they'll destroy it. It's a sign of uh, authority mm -hmm. and uh, it also is something that he uses to seal important documents. Right. So for example, I have a bulla of my appointment to Ottawa and the seal is there. It's a fisherman's seal. From it's that his. fisherman's yeah. ring. Mm -hmm. So that will not be, uh, people said, well, maybe we should put it in the museum, you know. And they said, no, we need to follow the procedure. So they're going to go as much as they can with tradition, right. uh, imagining in a certain sense that things are as they would be if a pope had died, mm -hmm. and move to the next stage, which is to the conclave and to the election of a successor. Then the interesting things start happening for not only Roman Catholics, but people around the world who, who you know, try Especially. and look at the favorites for uh, yeah. the, the papacy and so on. Um, is that something that... Um, uh, you know, people in the Roman Catholic Church speculate about. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we're humans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people put bets uh, with Patty Power, and uh, but you know, uh, they have a saying that the one who goes in the conclave as a pope comes out as a cardinal. You know, there's always a surprise, and I think we'd, the Holy Spirit will surprise us again with the choice of whoever succeeds. Uh, yeah. Benedict. There's been some talk of uh, maybe a Canadian who could uh, end up as as the pope. Well, Cardinal Ouellette's name has uh, featured on many people's lists. Uh, I am quite partial to him. I, I've known him a long time since we were both seminary rectors. Uh, we used to meet in Montreal at his uh, Grand Seminaire. Mm -hmm. uh, he speaks uh, five major languages. Uh, he's served in Latin America for 10 years as a professor. Served in Canada in Edmonton as mm -hmm. a uh, in an English-speaking environment. That's right. Served in Montreal, Archbishop of Quebec, worked in the Vatican before. Uh, he was named to the present post that he has, so he has many of the qualities. He's the right age, mm -hmm. 69 later this year, um, uh, not too young, not too old. Right. Uh, so uh, I think he, there, there are many uh, fine qualities. I think, above all, though, when I, uh, 
the Cardinal came to Ottawa a number of years ago with the Youth Fest that we had, and the young people really resonated with him. They gave him a great applause. He was in kind of controversial time, and mm -hmm. uh, he spoke from the heart. And he spoke a very powerful spiritual message. Right. He's, he's deeply a uh, spiritual person. It's very interesting these times for the Roman Catholic Church, and you know, um, maybe uh, there's a lot of attention on, on the church right now, and maybe that's not such a bad thing when it comes to all of this, because it certainly has a, a, awoken some Roman Catholics around the world, I think. Has yeah. and, and it's it's also coming up to the high seasons of the church year, uh, Easter, Holy Week. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that's going to put a focus on them in a way that uh, maybe is un unheard of. Archbishop, thanks for your time today. My really pleasure, appreciate Kurt. it. Good to be with you. Thank All you. Right.